Shabbat Shalom. We are in a special Shabbat, it's called this parasha. This parasha is called Truma. Uh, the word Truma comes from the verb, uh, the root verb in the Hebrew language, Rum. Uh, resh, Bab, means of feet. And what it basically means is to elevate. And we need to look at from that perspective everything that I'm going to be sharing with you this morning. Interestingly enough, the way, the way that uh, the beginning of this passage, uh, basically, uh, our Creator tells Moses that to tell the people of Israel and say, you know, to bring me, you no, know, to Mount. Um, I, don't, I have not translated because there are so many translations that have been brought to this. One it is offerings, one another is contribution, another is elevation, another is giving, another is uh, tidings and things like that. Uh, and sometimes uh, the, the Torah is very specific to give you a term. And it's going to repeat it over and over again to give you an idea. I have been telling you now for a long time that the rabbis speak in a circular way. They are not from point A to point B. They're going from point A to point A. They're constantly going back. No? Uh, and what is the repetition? Why so much repetition sometimes? Because you need to get it on one of those circles. No? And not only that, but once you make more circles, you're going to realize that the circles are no static, but they are going up and up and up. They are elevating. And to the time, you're going to realize that you are elevating yourself in your understanding about our creator revelation. And this is what is the beauty about studying his work, not the Torah. It's nothing static. It's totally the contrary. It's evolving, it's growing, you know, uh, and getting bigger and bigger. When you become very narrow-minded, you know, you lose the capability to see the whole picture. And you only focus on only one point. Let me tell you, the Torah is not puntilier. The Torah is holistic. It's to look the whole creation, the whole thing that our Creator has given us. And we, the human beings, that we are the, the, the top of His creation. He gave us the opportunity to, to, be, to be made according to His image and likeness. But it has a, a greater meaning, not only uh, the the very low understanding of only physical or morphological way to see it, or to make it materialistic or something uh, of a not ethereal. He's going to give us a lot of examples, but here I'm going to start with something that to me is an eye-opening in many ways. I could, uh, before this, only as a manner of introduction to this chapter, to this parasha, I want to let you know that there is a lot of controversy about the chronology of this portion, you know, because supposedly some of the, our greatest sages are uh, for, this, to, for the idea that this is not a chronological a study. And after chapter 24, supposedly needs to come the end of chapter 31 and 32, the golden calf. You know, the sin of the golden calf. But the question was why this was put before? Um, to understand now the, the role that the Mishkan, the sanctuary, is going to play in the relationship between our Creator and us. We need to take 
all these ideas in consideration in order to, uh, to at least to try to understand or to arrive to certain conclusions. When we teach and when we speak and when we do certain uh, uh, drushes in, in, this, in this community, our intention is not to be uh, uh, dogmatic, totally the contrary. It's to give you the opportunity for each one of you to have the opportunity to think, to elaborate, and to arrive to your own conclusions. No, I have been speaking to you, and maybe you are already tired to hear me about this, is that the greatest gift that our Creator gave us as human beings you know, life is, of course, a gift. But uh, the, the consequences of the life was called the free will. Why is so important to understand free will? Because I had mentioned to you before that many of the religions in the world, what they're trying to do is to limit the, that free will and to make us understand that all of us, we are like a cattle. You know, that we do not have our own way of thinking and we, we cannot arrive to our own conclusion. Most of the religions, they try to treat you like a cattle. You know, you need to follow this and this is the only way that you can do it. To my own surprise, when I, I was reading about the, the revelation that our Creator gave it to Moshe Rabbeinu, about the construction of the, the Mikdash, the sanctuary, he gave you very succinct elements. He gave you ideas. But he doesn't give you exactly how it needs to be done. Why? And this is what, to me, was like a revelation, uh, and very important. Because he trusts us. He gave us the opportunity to develop all the gifting that he has given to us because he gave us also to us the capability of imagination and creativity. He never said, do not imagine, do not create, do not do anything that you imagine. No, what we will, we will be just this week has come in the news about that finally, Albert Einstein has been confirmed that his theory was correct. After just 100 years, you know, can you imagine we have been giving the Torah more, almost 4,000 years ago, and we are just confirming that it's valid for us? One day you say, oh, I know, you see. <laughs> no? Do you know how long certain part of the world, they believe that the, 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 the earth was flat? And in each corner of the earth, there were four giant elephants holding the earth? <laughs> and you didn't believe in that way. Finite. You know? And the scientists, they will say, no, it's not like that. Shh. Well, today, we are not too far away from that situation. The Copernicus revolution is still on the way. And sadly enough, the people that hold you back mostly are the organized religions that they do not allow you to progress, to grow, and to become what our Creator intended from the beginning. For the reason, I want to speak about Truma, about the bringing something to the Creator. We need to be careful sometimes with the language that is used in order that we have a better understanding about what is the message. If you observe very carefully, our Creator never is going to say to the people, tell them to give me. 
He doesn't use the word to give. He uses the word to bring. To the verb to give, ten. The word to bring, kah. And everything is going to use the word kah, bring me. Now, I want to make you only a simple, uh, a, a simple idea. When you give, come from you. When you bring, if somebody gave it to you to take it. Okay? It's very different. Then, here's the point that I want to make. You and I, no one of us, can give anything to our Creator because He doesn't need absolutely nothing from us or absolutely anything from us. In English, they are not double negative. In Spanish, they are You see? Uh, for us, double negative is an emphasis. In English, is minus plus minus equal plus. plus. You know? Okay. That's, okay. Mathematics. We are contrary to mathematics. We are smart. Anyway, this is something that I want to emphasize. From now on, don't ever put a big faith in there is something to bring to God. Because our Creator is going to give it to you in order that you bring it to Him. You don't have anything. I don't have anything. We do not have anything to give it to Him. Even those animals that they were offering the Korbanot has nothing to do with that. He gave us the animals and we brought the animals to Him. Why are you making such an emphasis? Because we need to take away this idea I am sacrificing. I am making a sacrifice. And many religions have taught that to bring it to our Creator is a sacrifice. And it's totally the contrary. And here, look at what it says. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Bene Israel, the children of Israel, that they bring me a teruma, a truma, bring me a contribution, bring me a offering, bring me an elevation, bring me something. From everyone who has the will to do it, we open heart, we happy heart, we, we decide with his heart. Nobody forcing him, nobody putting the pistol on their head, nobody pushing them. Why? And here is going to be the character of the believer, the character of the true believer. When you need to start, start asking people to give, there is something wrong in the community. There is something wrong in their hearts. Because they do not have a willing heart. And not only is something wrong in their heart, but they, they are so tight. Because what is being asked to them, in no of them, is from him. Many of us, sometimes, we're wondering about what it means to be to, with the idea of giving. And I want to say to you, change the idea of giving. And put it on the other side and say, bring me. You know, here in our community, very interesting, we have, after we finish, our own aid. I know if you're interested in your neck, we bring something. We don't give something. We bring something. 
and bring you what we do, we are happy to share. And many of us were so happy to say, I brought this. You know? That is, it's a sense of accomplishment. And I am able to bring it. Why? Because my Creator has given me the means to do it. It's totally different. I need to give. See, you know what? I, I better I don't come. They're forcing me to give. They're taking the joy of me to be here. You, you see the attitude? It's totally different. Why? Rabbi Shavuch talk about the cheerful heart. You know? Why? Because that creator doesn't want anything from you. And you are stingy or stinky or whatever way you want to use it. Okay? It's your problem. Not him. And he is going to say to you, keep it. Put it in your in your in your pocket. Because I do not need it. And this is how sad it is when we talk ourselves about that we go and we hear that revelation. And like we say, we become only listeners, but are very poor doers. And the Torah, it is not to listen alone. Because in the Hebrew language, to listen means to obey. And they say, we will do, and then we obey. How that could be right? I want to explain to you. The only way, the only way that you are following the Creator is when you are doing what He tells you, and then you are obeying. You say, I want to obey. How many of us we say, and I have this beautiful word that has coined? I am thinking about it. <laughs> you know, I am thinking about it. You know that thinking can last until eternity comes. How many of us we are thinking about it? And the attitude here it is being proactive, doing, no waiting, is acting. How many times we say, you know, well, nobody told me that I need to do something. Nobody asked me. And I say, have you seen the need? Of course, but nobody asked me. <laughs> you look at that and you say, good. I can see that you still are part of the community. Because if, if the community needs to ask you to do something, it's already too late. Because it's very obvious that as part of the community, I don't see the needs of the community. I am not integrated in the community. I don't look. Now, here going back to Truma. A creator is going to give it. And many people have made a big deal about this. He's going to describe or re request 15 different elements to build the Mishkan. No? These 15 elements, the people are quite as, as this and not. You know, sometimes we become so uh, spiritual, let me put it that way, we spiritualize so much that we lose the practicality of the teachings. And the, and the Torah. Our Creator is going to ask only the things that they have because He has given. Why, why the Lord didn't ask, for example, uh, in, among these 15 elements, uh, a plastic uh, cover? Wasn't invented. 
Wow, no invented. Huh? Oh, why he didn't ask, uh, for example, uh, uh, to bring, instead to make a, uh, some kind of a, uh, acacia wood? Why he didn't ask for caoba? Or, or for a more a, a sophisticated uh, wood? He was asking the things that they hadn't there. What is it to us the hair of the the, the hair of the um, of the ram? Why did he ask for the hair of the, the llama or the alpaca? <laughs> They're finer, the vicuña, finer. <laughs> Creator has created everything. The, what, I, what I want to give you the, the idea is that he asked them what he, they already have. This is the point, second point here. He will never ask you something that he has not given to you so that you don't have it in your hands. He's not going to ask you to invent or to go to the end of the world to look for it. This is important to understand because what he is asking is what you have what he had given to you. Later on, with the, with the, these different chapters that we're going to see about the building of the Mishkan, we're going to see how he called also men and women, not only to bring things, but are asking their expertise, asking their capabilities, construction and, and textiles and things like that. Everybody, carpenters, people that work with metals, everyone participated, each one according to their skills. I may ask you who gave those skills to these people. Now, and to close this short insight about Truma, it is what is the greatest truma that we can offer to our Creator? Ourselves. And what happens when we offer ourselves? We elevate ourselves. Rom, truma, to elevate. It's like you become lighter. In, 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 in a picture, let me give them this way. You know, you're, you, you're like a balloon filled, uh, filled with gas, you know, but uh, you are holding with something in the air. And suddenly you let it go, you elevate. Because the material things are holding you down. You are holding yourself down. We are holding ourselves down. Because we think that we are more important than to serve a creator. How many times have I have heard this statement? Oh, my time is precious. Don't mess with my time. And I worship my time. My time is sacred. No, 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 don't ask me. This is. This moment, no, no, no. I had already enough things. I cannot do too many things. That's all they can do. Self-centeredness. It is a problem. And who becomes my center? Myself. See, Truma means to alleviate yourself of the things that are holding you down, and to really be able to be free, to be closer to our Creator. That is what it is. When we are holding something, when we hold something, that something becomes our God. Be careful what you are holding so hard. And our Creator wants to liberate us 
and to make us light. In verse 8, there is a very interesting statement that has caused a lot of things among our sages and has created many ideas. Beasuli Mikdash, Beshahanti Betoham. Now, um, um, mainly, you know, a sanctuary, Mikdash, in which I will dwell. And the normal thing will say, I will dwell in it. No? Instead to say Betohan, I will say Betoho, do it in it. But what is interesting is that doesn't say Betoho, say Betohan, mean to do it in them. What is interesting? Because it's obvious that you cannot put that creator in a box. It is obvious that you cannot put a creator in a tent. It is obvious that you cannot put our creator on something made by men. But what is he telling you? Because you need a focus point. I want to give you a focus point. You can look at the Mikdash, but I want to be with you all the time, dwelling in you. You know, Rab Shaul, known as the Apostle Paul, had a very interesting statement too that the rabbis has also developed. It's about this idea that each one of us, we become the Mikdash. We become the, the Mishkan of the presence, the Shekhinah of our Creator because He always is going to be with us. Wherever you go, wherever I go, wherever we go, believe me or no, he is with us. And now you say, oops. Where are which places I have taken here? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it too much. Are you going to tell me that he was there when I was? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to tell me when I did that he was there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they say, uh, now I understand something. I do know, I am not able to hide from him. I am not able to deceive him. I am not able to play a game because he knows everything. Why? In this moment, is put here the Mikdash, the Ohel Moe, the Ten of Meeting that later on is going to bring and to speak in this book of Shemot. Like I said to you, our, our sages are divided about if chronological or no chronological, but whatever is the situation, the Mikdash was not the most important thing. If you are very curious and you start reading very carefully, the centrality of this message is where to keep the tablets that our Creator gave it to the people of Israel. That was the key. In chapter 24, just before, I can read to you. From verse 9 he say in chapter 24, And then Moses went up also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw that the God of Israel, and, the, and, and, and there was under his feet, and there were pain work of sapphire stones, and it was like the very heavens and his clarity. But on the nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand. So they saw God and they ate and drank. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
come up to me onto the mountain, and there I will give you the tablets of stone and the Torah and the commandments which I have written that you may teach them. 24. Yeah, what book do you think I read? Okay. So Moses, you can see, so Moses arose, and um, if any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. And then Moses went up into the mountains, and the cloud covered the mountains. Now the glory of the Lord rested on the mountain Sinai, and the cloud covered in six days, and on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like consuming fire on the top of the mountain and the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. What he went there? To receive the tablets. And what the tablet was going to do? What it says here, to put the tablets in the ark. The ark, the Aaron, was the center, the centrality of this, of this uh, midash of sanctuary. Why? Because that was his covenant, that was his breed between him and the people of Israel. And this is why it was so important to keep it there. Sometimes we, we do not understand about the, the simple things that our Creator is trying to teach us, and we start to elaborate, and we become more preoccupied with how tall was the, the tent, and how many, how, how long it was, and what the material said, the, the quality of the materials, and, and, and the Creator doesn't give you too much information. Only say to you these certain things. For example, no one of us knows about how thick were the beams. We do not know if they were square or they were round. Nobody knows. One of them never was told. He gave it to the people at the moment, you know, to decide what they do. That was their own imagination. Maybe there were some of the carpenters that they like it, round beams, okay? And there were others they like it, square beams. We don't know. And we will never know until we go to the other side. What I try to tell you, we give so much importance to the things that they don't need to give it so much importance. And we, the thing that we need to give it a lot of importance, we totally obviate them. And this is how religions are made. Because many times we love to work with the hocus pocus. We like to work with our own uh, imagination and we want to say more than what the scriptures say. And we sometimes don't understand that our Creator is leading us in a way that He wants to us to be practical too. You know, He didn't show, for example, in no moment He said, you know, you need to get a saw and cut the, the wood. He needed to tell you that. He tell you it needs to be this length. You know how much you need to cover. He never say how thick needs to be the covering of the uh, uh, the around the, the ark. Uh, how much gold you need to put? You need to put a lot of oil, gold, very little gold, and only a very fine uh, layer, a very heavy layer. No, only say. You build the the they are on the, the ark with, with with this wood and then you cover with gold. Why? Because it's still like I start this message. He created to his likeness and image and he gave us the capability to think for ourselves. 
to do for ourselves, to create, to imagine. We had a capability, and he given the freedom, the artistic freedom, we can call it a way to do. And what religion does? <laughs> Look at the difference. Our Creator is giving us a lot of lead away. And what the religion does? Little by little they are putting you in a box. Little by little they are cons they, they consume you with rules and regulations that they make you sweat and you feel trapped. And still to enjoy a relationship with the Creator, making you a heavy relationship. And the heavy relationship is basic, is basic on do's and don'ts. And takes away from you your free will. You cannot do anything to the Creator because it's not in the books. You cannot do that because it's not in the books. And then you ask them, when you have created all your criteria about how to worship your Creator. How many of that criteria is from the Torah? And how many of that criteria is from your own imagination? Why we Jewish people, we have so many types of traditions according to the, to the way that you come from? The Ashkenazim, they has a, a way. The Sephardim has another way. The Mizrahim has another way. Each one has their own way, their own traditions. The Ethiopian they has another way. You know, who's correct? The one that's stronger? The one that's in government? This is the problem of our religion. The same way we have with, the, with Christianity. Just yesterday I was watching the news and I saw that the Catholic Pope has talked to the Orthodox Russian Pope and now they are kissing each other in the three sides, you know? And they are now partners again. After 1,000 years they didn't talk to each other. Is that convenient? Now the question for whom? This is the problem about religions. They're always thinking about the people, are we thinking about our relationship with the Creator, or we're thinking about ourselves. When a person becomes the most important thing in any place, that place is wrong. Because our Creator moves with all of us. And He builds us. And He gives us this understanding. And each one of us we can be part of that true mother. And we bring things to our Creator. And each one that brings something. You know, one maybe bring the gold, another bring the cassette, another bring the 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 uh, the, the leather and the and the uh, the, the the, the textiles or the, or, or, the, or the wood or the different uh, uh, precious stones, each one is going to bring what they have been given. And you know how? When we bring it to him, we bring it with joyful desire. Our hearts are trembling of happiness because we are part of this. This is what is so joyful about to be part of the, of the, of the community. But what happens if you do not give? You, uh, in other words, you don't bring. Who is the one that's set, set, setting you apart? Not the creator, it's you. Because he said, very clear, only Bring me those who are willing and joyful heart. If you feel obliged, 
If you feel forced, you already, you are saying that you are not part. And sadly enough, in our community, we have many people like that. We have people that do not bring things joyfully. We have people that they feel obligated. And, they, and if they are obligated, they are going to be resentful. And they are going to be resentful. What is going to happen when you are resentful? You become very negative. And when you become negative, what do you do? You become destructive. See, it is the attitude that we need to have for everything that we do. <coughs> My father, blessed be his memory, used to say to me, son, if you don't do it with good heart, please don't do it. Now I understand more than ever why he said that. Because if you think that you you are being used or you are being uh, or, or, or you are being exploited or, or anything like that, I can assure you that sooner or later you are going to quit. But nothing more wonderful it is when it comes from you in a joyful way and, and you give yourself, give yourself because you bring yourself to the Creator. You are bringing Him back what He gave it to you, but in your own life. And this little by little, in a very, now over spiritualizing a little bit maybe, I would say it is that more when you are on the side of the Creator, your life is going to be lighter because you are going to be elevated. That's his true man. See, we start with the material things. If you are curious too about to read the list of the 15 elements that are here in the true man, in this parasha, start with the thing that we as human beings we consider the most expensive ones. And we end it but supposedly the simple one. For us in our mind it is a creator value the one that gives more expensive than the, the one that gives less. And that's not the case. What he is asking to the people is bring what you have. The one that more is giving, more is required. That's so simple. Let me bring you now back to something. Because to me it's so important to understand this parasha. The sanctuary I see as the focus point. What we need to look at constantly. Especially when we are confused, especially when we are not clear in our own thoughts, let's go back to our creator. Let's focus. Let's focus on the Torah. What he gave us, what he taught us. In the what are the ten words that Asere had de brought? What he said in the ten sayings, the ten statements? And are you going to see one by one? And you say, yes, here, yes, here, yes, here, yes, here. And then suddenly your attitude is going to change. Because, you see, sometimes we think that we are the only one that we serve. And I want to tell you, there are many people who serve. But sometimes there are people who must, do not serve and look like that they are serving. These two things, we need to be clear, sir. And the only one that knows about that, exactly knows about that, is our Creator. 
no one of us has the right to judge anybody. Because I cannot judge the heart of other people. I cannot judge the intention of other people, but our Creator knows us. There are people who serve because they want to be religious. I say, and I make it this challenge to you, serve a creator because you are free to serve him, not because you are in a prison and you don't have any other choice. One of the greatest joys to serve a creator it is that I could do something else. You know, one time, one person said to me, no long time, no, no long time ago, I was inviting them to come for Shabbat to our services. I said, my Shabbat are for me. And I don't like to go those things because I am enjoying myself. Some beautiful. He's free. He's free to enjoy himself. One thing that has discovered that this person is very miserable. Because when you're isolated, sooner or later, you're going to be alone. And you're going to see that God created us to have this partnership and fellowship to us to have a community, to be a people. That's the reason they put the center, the focus point, put the Torah, the own, the ark, the core with the sanctuary. For the people of Israel, not to look at the other side, but constantly to have in their hearts, in their minds, who he is. We constantly, we need to go back to that. We constantly, when we are getting a little bit out of the, of, of, the, of, of, the, of the way, let's refocus, constantly refocus. Because sometimes it's very easy, you know, the business of the, of the, of, of the, of the life, the job, the thing that we need to do, children, family, everything. I say to you, always focus, always focus. Because wherever you are, wherever you are, if you focus, you are bringing to our Creator. And this is true man, true true man. Bring to our Creator. And the first thing that you need to bring is ourselves. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.